Hi, and welcome to the second episode of Learning to Edit with DaVinci Resolve. My name is Darren Mostyn, and in this episode, we're going to look at basic editing techniques. So over the next few minutes, I'm going to explain the editing interface. We're going to create a timeline. We're going to mark in and mark out on some clips, and I'm going to show you different ways of navigating and getting them into the timeline itself. You're going to find over the next few minutes that it's very easy to use, and you should be pretty familiar with the interface by the time we finish this episode. So let's take a look at the interface itself. So here we are in the edit page in our project. We've got the media page, remember, so we've populated this in the previous episode. And now if we go to the edit page, you'll see in the top corner here, the media pool. So this is an exact copy of the media pool. Remember, you can go in and out of any of these pages at any time. So in the edit page, top left is the media pool. Here, this is the source viewer. So if I take a cutaway here and just throw it in, you'll see that this is where we can actually view the clips and have a look through. And maybe here is where we would start doing some mark in and mark out and deciding on exactly the area of the clip that we want to use in our edit. This is the timeline viewer where we view the edits actually on the timeline. And the timeline itself is sat down in this section here. There are a few hidden windows on this page. So if we go up here, you can have a look at this one. This is the effects library. So what this does is allow us to view all the effects that are available to Resolve. This talks to third-party plugins as well, so if you have them installed, they'll appear in here. We've got the Edit Index, which will start populating as we build up our edits. We've also got a metadata window. So in here, we can have a look at the metadata associated with the current clip. We've got an inspector, so this allows us to uh, do zooming and cropping and such on clips in the actual timeline itself. We can also view the timeline in expanded mode. So if I click on here, there we can have a full width timeline now. And if you want to reset at any point, just click on the workspace up here and you can reset. So we're nearly ready to make our first timeline, but just before we do, go to the project settings, check your timeline resolution is correct. You can change this after, but remember our frame rate is now fixed because we've started importing media. And also just click on general options and there's a really cool setting here called use timelines bin. And what that will do is create a new bin for me up here and it forces any created timelines to sit inside this bin and not inside any of these. So it means you can always locate your sequences really easily. To create a new sequence, press Command N or simply right hand click in the media pool. And we'll call this sequence one. I'm just going to create one video track and one audio track. And at the moment it's going to be stereo. We're going to cover audio in a separate episode. And now you see we have one track of video and one track of audio down on our timeline. To create more video tracks, just simply right hand click here and say add track. We'll do, just do the video or add tracks. We'll do video and audio tracks. We can rename any of these. So just simply click and we'll call this one dialogue and you're good to go. So I just want to talk about navigating through clips. So let's load in our interview. And we can just use the mouse to scrub through. We can press play, we can press stop. But professional editors would use the keyboard at all times. This keeps you really accurate and fast. So spacebar will play, but more commonly is to use the J, K, and L keys. You have a finger on each key. J is reverse, K is pause, and L is forward. If I press L again, it will give me twice speed, twice speed again, twice speed again. K will pause and the same for J. So you can really navigate around your clip very quickly. Okay, let's edit our first clip in. So let's go to our cutaways. Another way to load the source view is just double click. And we have a look through this shot here. We can press play. And just as he's coming in there, so I'm gonna use my JKL keys to go back. And we can also use our left and right keys just to go frame at a time. So if JKL is a bit too fast for you, just use your left and right keys. Let's just go to the point where it's just off frame and press I to mark in. And we're going to go out there. If I want to go back to my endpoint, if you just press Shift and I, that will shift you to the endpoint. Shift to the endpoint. And there we go. So now we've just marked a region of this clip. That's the entire clip. And we're going to drag and drop that down onto our timeline. So just to show you that I've not taken the whole clip down, if I actually go to the end of the clip here, my cursor will turn into a trim tool. And you see there the white boundary is telling me how much clip I've got left to use if I want to. And I can just trim that back and forward if I like. Let's load another shot in. This time I'm just going to drag and drop it into the viewer. And there we go. That's quite nice when he moves down to the dog there. So let's use our JKL. And we'll just go back a little bit. That's it. Mark in there. And there we go. Down to the dog. That's great. And just drag and drop into the timeline. Now this time I'm going to use this snap to tool. It's like a little magnet icon. And this means that this clip will lock frame accurately to the other clip. Okay. If I undo that, if I take this off, you'll see that if I don't do that, it's very easy to actually just nudge the other clip out of the way. 
Okay, so let's just do that again. And there we have our first two edits. Okay, so my third shot, I'm going to edit in a slightly different style. I'm going to drag into the source viewer as we've been doing before. Let's just very quickly mark in nice, a couple of seconds nice there. Speed. That's fine. And instead of dragging down to the timeline, what I'm going to do is drag from the source viewer to the timeline viewer. And this gives me a choice of edit styles. So I have insert edit, overwrite edit, and all these different other styles. So I'm just going to use overwrite for now. And that drops the mark in, mark out directly down to my timeline. Let's bring in our interview. And another very cool feature here, if I click on here, I can actually view my audio waveforms inside the source viewer. So this is a really cool way of actually seeing your interview as a visual representation. So if we just scrub through here. Citizen Chain, the name is of course inspired by the movie Citizen Kane, in which the protagonist's dying words are rosebud. And it sets okay, so that's the area that we want. Just to check that, if I press Alt and forward slash, Citizen we can Chain, actually play that. That will just play the in to out as a loop. Dying words are rosebud. And that's great. Now another way of bringing this down is to use the function key. So we've got F9 is insert and F10 will overwrite. So I'm going to press F10 and the video will come down to whichever tracks have got the red square on. So video one has a red square and audio one has a red square. Now if we want to start navigating around our timeline, there's various tools we can use to do that. The up and down arrows will take you in between edits. So frame accurately, you're moving between the edit points. To go to the start of the timeline, press the home key and the end key. And shift and Z will make my timeline fit in the best possible fit that it can. Shift Z again to go back to where you were. So by using the up and down arrow keys, I can set my playhead ready for the next interview point. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to line it up just before the interview. I want to put one more shot in just before the interview started. So the shot I want to bring in is this uh, storefront shot. So let's just load that in. Let's have a quick look what's going on here. And we've got a nice little tilt down. Now we can use F9 and F10 to do this. F9 will insert the shot and F10 will overwrite the shot. The tracks that the video and audio go to are determined by the red boxes here. So the video is going to go to video track one and the audio is going to go to the dialog. So these two red boxes are looking at the source. Now if I press F10, watch what happens here. The interview is going to stay exactly where it is and our shot will overwrite on top. So it's actually destroyed the first part of our interview. So let me undo that. Command Z. Let's do that now using insert, which is F9, and that will actually move and ripple the interview up. So that means that we get a nice edit. Citizen Chain, the name is of course inspired by the movie Citizen... Much better. So let's bring in another clip, but using our second layer of video. So if I bring in a shot here, we can use this as a little cutaway. Let's just mark a very quick area up. And what I want to do is take this video clip, but not put it on video one. I want it to go on to video two. So if we reroute here, the video channel to video two, and we can put the audio down here, or in fact, we could just delete the audio by deselecting. And then we can literally either drag and drop or we can use our keyboard shortcuts that we've been using. So place your playhead where you want the clip to start, which will be the edit point, and press F10. And now we have a cutaway. Citizen Chain, the name is of course inspired by the movie Citizen Kane. We're going to look more into accurate trimming in another episode. What about moving and deleting clips on the timeline? Well, if we just select a clip, you just literally highlight it with your mouse. You can use the comma and full stop keys to nudge a frame at a time. If you use the shift key in conjunction with that, you'll move multiple frames at a time. You'll notice the clips are linked. If I just highlight the video, the audio is automatically highlighted as well. You can deselect that using the link tool. So if I press on that, now you see only the video is highlighted or only the audio is highlighted. And they can be moved independently of each other now. If we want to delete a shot, just highlight the shot you want to delete and press backspace. This leaves a gap. So if we undo that, Command Z, if we want to delete that in ripple mode, if you press shift and backspace, all the other clips will move up, filling that gap. And in our next episode, we're going to look at more creative editing techniques in DaVinci Resolve. Thank you for listening.